Roger, Robert. Recheck OK. Ready for liftoff as soon as Fireball XL7 returns from patrol, Steve. Good. I've just got time to read the report of the Interplanetary League spaceship race. I hear it was a real boss race. Gee, that must have been some race. One of these days we'll have to enter Fireball. <laughs> I bet we'd lick the pants off them. Oh, Professor, can't you stop thinking about flying for once? Well, what else is there? Well, I find plenty to do. Sewing on buttons and doing the laundry for crusty old bachelors like you and Steve. <laughs> Venus, I don't know what we'd do without you. Well, what about some coffee, Professor? Well, only if you insist. I insist. Hmm. I'm glad about that. I sure am thirsty. <laughs> Hey, Sailor Zoon, hey, what's wrong? You're acting mighty strange tonight, Lizoon. Won't be a moment, Professor. Say, what's wrong with Zuni? Something is worrying him, all right. It's, a, it's kind of uncanny. Well, Lizoons are known to be very sensitive creatures. He must sense that something is wrong. looking up into the sky. Well, Venus, he, uh, he does come from another planet. Maybe he's uh, homesick or something. Or perhaps there's some sort of trouble out there in space. Space City, come in emergency. Fireball XL7 emergency out of control. Repeat, Fireball XL7 out of control. What's the matter? Fireball XL7 emergency, Steve. What is your position, Fireball XL7? Repeat. What is your position? Over. It's impossible to tell. Instruments have gone haywire. Tell Ross to use ejectors. It's their only chance. Eject. 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 Emergency. Eject. Over. Still no answer. I don't like it. As soon as the moon rises, I'm going out there to investigate. <laughs> Professor, I'm worried. I've never known Zuni to act like this before. Yeah, I must admit, it's, uh, it's very strange. Yeah, but you better try and get some rest before we take off, Venus. Yes, I guess you're right, Professor. I'll be getting back on the fireball to get some sleep. Uh, thanks for the coffee. You know, it's about time you got yourself somewhere to leave, Professor. Don't you see enough of fireball while you're on patrol without being there when we are back on Earth? Well, I, uh, I guess it's my home. Besides, it's... Uh, Good enough for me. Uh, now, 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 don't, 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 get, don't, don't get up, Venus. <laughs> I'll see myself out. Now, don't worry about Lazoon. He'll be okay. Good night. Good night, Professor. Sleep well. Oh, well, I suppose I should get some sleep. Now, Zuni, are you feeling better? <coughs> now, who can that be at this hour? Hello? Yes? I see. The professor has just left. He's going back to Fireball. I'll be down right away, Steve. I'll help you prepare for takeoff so the professor can get his sleep. Pre-liftoff checks complete. What's the time now, Venus? Well, the professor set that old alarm of his for 9.30. And there it goes now. There it went, you mean. I can't think why he keeps that old clock. 
1962 model, over 100 years old. He says it's more accurate than any space chronometer. <laughs> He's just a toot. But a nice toot. Shouldn't the moon be up by now? Yeah, it should. Maybe our space time clock has gone wrong. I'll call up Commander Zero. About time Zodiac was on his way. Why haven't you cleared his takeoff? We're waiting for moonrise, Commander Zero. Hey, Commander, what have you done with the moon? It's overdue ten minutes already. I want to get out to look for XL-7. Over. I know it's urgent, Steve, but something's gone haywire. You better get the professor to make some quick calculations. Okay, I'll wake him. What goes on? Are, are we on fire or something? Uh, anyone care for a cup of tea before we go? Professor, for Pete's sake. We've got to work fast. XL-7 has disappeared. Yes, and so has the moon. Still no sign, Commander. And no response on Space Echo either. I don't like it at all. Well, according to my calculations, no disturbance or eruption is due in the moon's vicinity. It can't have just disappeared into space. But it has. It's nearly two hours overdue. And spaceship XL-7 patrolling that area is missing, too. Quick, Steve. The moon. It's rising at last. Okay, Venus. I'll be right with you. Alert Space Commander Zero. Look, there it is. Look how far away it is. Something's very wrong. Full power. Checks here are at go. Course nine two four zero red. Set and hold. Course nine two four zero red. Set and hold. Velocity maximum. Maintained. Roger. Cut main power. Next stop, moon. I'll go back and see how the professor's making out. What's your estimated time of contact, Professor? Well, I should say our ETC is in about half an hour. If our space speed remains constant, <laughs> we just have time for a nice cup of tea. Professor, you and your cups of tea. Yes, Professor, you and your cups of tea. You've ruined another of my retorts with that tea-making contraption of yours. You've overheated it, and it's gone all out of shape. Look. Oh, gee, I'm, I'm sorry, Venus. <laughs> I forgot. Well, how about trying again, Professor? And this time, can we please have some coffee? Well, Professor, I must say, your coffee is like your tea. It's hard to tell the difference. Don't worry, Professor. I think it's real boss. This is impossible. We're making no progress at all. The moon is in exactly the same position as it was half an hour ago. What's the matter? I don't know yet. We'll have to increase our space velocity. You mean fire main boosters? Yes, we'll have to use full power. Otherwise, we'll lose track of the moon altogether. Fire main boosters, Robert. Firing main boosters. Well, it's what I get for trying to be helpful and do the clearing up. I'll stick to my own quarters in future. Sorry, Professor, there's no time to warn you. No, I should think so, too. This sort of thing is no good for me at my age. Poor Professor. I hope he hasn't ruined any more of my equipment. Look, we're gaining. Space velocity seven increasing. That should do it. Cut main boosters. Cut the main boosters. Our 
speech had remained constant now. Amazing velocity, a point divide increasing. Increasing? Nine point five. Then increasing. We're getting out of control. Switch to manual, Robert. Manual positive velocity, 14 increasing. We're out of control. We can't keep conscious for long. Must contact Space City. Look, the space-time clock. We must be in some ultramagnetic field. Contact Space City. Steve. Steve, you're going too fast. Too fast. Fireball XL5 to Space City. Fireball XL5 to Space City. we can do they've missed they've missed but where are they heading sir we've altered course you mean we're no longer heading for the moon exactly but we're still out of control out of control then where are we heading? Course 2490, blue out of control. 2490, blue? Yes, just like XL7, we're out of control and heading into the unknown. Whatever force is dragging the moon into its orbit, it's dragging us faster. <laughs> thought so. Well, what's the answer, Professor? Where are we heading? Well, according to my calculations, the planet Magneton. The magnetic planet? Of course. The planet with the most powerful gravitational pull in the entire universe. Yeah, but somehow, even its most powerful force must have been increased thousands of times to pull the moon and us halfway through the universe. Did you hear that, Steve? Yes, but you should see what I can see. Magneton, straight ahead of us. Wow. Okay, we'll be right with you. Magneton. A gigantic, lifeless ball of metal. Not so lifeless. There's only one chance. I'm going to try and turn Fireball round and then switch on full power. She won't go. Made it. Full power. Full power. Hold on tight this time, Professor. Velocity decreasing. Prepare for landing procedure. So far, so good. Let's go. Look at Robert. He's out of action. Must be the effect of the magnetic field on his electronics. Poor Robert. Oh, he'll be all right. Come on. All set. All set.
I shall never get used to these infernal machines. Say, hey, look at that. Let's go and investigate. You better take a look around up there. Get the thruster packs out of the jetmobiles, will you, Venus? Wait for me, Steve! Hey, take it easy, Professor. Uh, made it. Say, Professor, look down there. A gigantic powerhouse. Generating magnetic power. How do we get inside? Well, we've, we've been around the building and there doesn't seem to be a door anywhere. Quick, Steve. Professor, look at this. sort of scrapyard. What's it all about, Professor? Well, I should say that uh, it's all being used in some way as fuel for these generators. An ingenious method of using up old scrap. Look what's amongst that old scrap. Well, if that's the only way in, that's the way for us, too. We'll use our thruster packs. And take it easy this time, Professor. That's right, Professor. Pilot of Fireball XL7. Chuck's here, too. Jumping speed speed. We've got to get the Professor out before any scrap gets dumped on him. Don't worry. There's plenty of room in there. Your friend has got company already. Two of your other Earth spacemen. Where's the voice coming from? There must be an amplifier somewhere. We are right here. In this very room. And who are we? We are the Solas, the force of the universe, and I am the Super Solar, the supreme commander of all the Solas here on Magneton. You cannot see us, Earthmen, but we're here, and we can see you. Steve, they're invisible. Yes, we're invisible to you, Earth people. And we do not intend your arrival to interfere with our plan. And what is your plan? To bring your moon into our orbit. So that at last, we will no longer be creatures of the dark, but have light on Magneton. Not if I can help it. Sounds as if Steve's come into contact with the invisible solars. And if I know Steve, they'll get the worst of the deal. Look out, Steve! The grub! That settled the solars. Now let's get the professor out. Uh, Steve! Steve! Here we are, professor. We'll soon have you out of there. Stand back. Okay, out you come, boys. Give the professor a hand. Feeling all right, everyone? Sure, fine. I just wish I had my glasses, that's all. Hey, am, I, am I imagining things, or has someone put a light on? It's the moon. It's getting closer. We've got to reverse the power. Find the master switch. How much time have we got? Only a matter of minutes. It's no good. We can't find the master switch. I'll, uh, I'll see if it's up here. 
What are you doing, Professor? Oh, it's all right, Steve. I can manage. The light's so good, I can see. You've done it, Professor. Yep. I've reversed the power, Steve, and the moon's going back into its normal position. Now, would someone tell me how to find my way out of here? I can't see a darn thing without my glasses. Don't worry. We'll have you down in a moment, Professor. Yep. And then home sweet home. it wonderful to see the moon again? I never knew it meant so much to us on Earth. Yeah. I guess you do kind of take things for granted when they're around you all the time. I know, Steve. Even doctors of space medicine. How's that? Never mind. Forget it. We cruise along the Milky Way And land upon the moon To a wonderland of stardust We'll zoom our way to Mars My heart would be a fireball A fireball Cause you would be my moon 